Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. So in a previous video, I did a quick rundown of five tools that cost less than $10 that I use here in the garage all the time. And so I wanted to do a second version of this video to give you five more tools that are under $10 that I also use in the garage that I find indispensable. And all right, so let's go ahead and get on with the first tool, and that is a paint can opener. Now, some of you might think this is a little bit ridiculous. Um, I did for the longest time. I just generally used a screwdriver or whatever I can find to open my paint cans. But it turns out that this little paint can opener with the hook on the end makes the process so much more easy and so much more enjoyable. And if you're like me, you have cans of finish and paint that are essentially sealed shut. This little hook in the end really allows you to get in there, get under the lid and get that lid open. So these things are very inexpensive. They are $7.67 for a five pack. So just over a dollar for each one. So very, very inexpensive. And I highly recommend having more than one of them laying around wherever you might need it. Cause I will tell you every time you need it, you have trouble finding it. I actually have a special place on my wall here that I have it hung up and that is where it goes after every time I use it so I know where it is. Uh, and so anytime if I need to open a paint can or a finishing can, I have it at my ready disposal. So this thing I found very invaluable. The next tool that I want to cover is something that I find completely and utterly indispensable in the garage, and that is a mechanical pencil. Now this specific mechanical pencil is a very inexpensive and cheap mechanical pencil made out of plastic. And I can get a 40 pack of these for just $6.24, which is about 16 cents each. So now you can go out and buy yourself a really high quality, relatively expensive mechanical pencil for about $11.49. But comparatively speaking, a 40 pack of these at just over 16 cents each allows you to have these pencils anywhere that you might need them. Downstairs in the office, for example, out here in the garage, on your workbench, over by your table saw, maybe by your planer. And more importantly, the uh, 0.5 millimeter lead here fits perfectly into some of the woodpecker's tools that I have that allows me to do marking. Now, again, it is not the highest quality piece of equipment you will ever find. It is just plastic and they are very inexpensive. The lead breaks like there's no tomorrow, but you have 40 of them and they are 16 cents, right? So if you want that one high quality mechanical pencil, I do recommend you get one and keep it with you all the time. But if you're like me and you have trouble finding these things and you want, you want to keep a stash of them everywhere, then just invest in one of these very inexpensive mechanical pencil bundles. And so I will tell you that, you know, I keep one pretty much everywhere, usually right here. So I know where it is, but they are laying everywhere in the garage. So highly recommend you run out, get yourself one of these mechanical pencils for only $6.24 for a 40 pack. The third tool that I want to run through is also something that I have found indispensable for finishing wood products. And now I use this for lots of different things, not just some cutting boards, but this is a rubber or foam sanding block. Now this one I have here is Velcro and it does have these little kind of inserts for your fingers while you're sanding here. Uh, and it fits my hand perfectly. It just really cups into my palm of my hand really nice. And so this one, again, it has the Velcro, so it uses the sandpaper that comes with my sander or I get from my sander. Now I did switch to a six inch sander and so the sandpaper on this block is a little bit big because uh, it's made for five inch sandpaper but it still works no problem. It just hangs over a little bit on the edge on the top. No big deal. And so I found this sanding block I think at a local big box store uh, but I will leave a link down below to one that I found on Amazon. It's actually a two pack for $9.99. So under that $10 limit but you get two of these and I got to be honest with you I really could use another one. Uh, it, all, it seems like every time I want to use it, I can't find it or that it is being used by someone else, for example. So definitely recommend picking up two of these for sanding blocks and uh, just makes the uh, hand sanding process that much more pleasurable. So the next tool that I want to cover falls into one of those categories of tools that if you have it and you need it, it's the perfect tool. 
if you don't need it, then it just sits in your drawer forever and collects dust. And that is one of these step tools. And so I actually bought a three pack here from I think Harbor Freight. They were very inexpensive, but they work really, really well. So if you need to make a hole in metal specifically and you need to drill a very large hole, um, and you need to go from a small hole to a large hole, then these things are utterly perfect. And so I had some holes that I need to make just a little bit bigger and trying to do it with a drill bit of the appropriate size in the metal was nearly impossible. But using one of these step bits, you can just slowly press into the metal. It reams it out to the size that you need and there's little graduated marks here on the side uh, that allows you to kind of get closest to the hole that you're looking for. And so it just works so perfectly. I was taken back the first time I used one of these. Um, I'd never had them before. I, they were recommended to me by someone on the internet. And so I just found them really, really useful. And like I said, I've used them a handful of times. When you need them, you need them. And there's one thing that I learned in woodworking that when you have the right tool to do the job, it makes it so much more pleasurable. And in this case, this is the right tool for that job. And so if you don't have some of yourself of these step bits and you are finding yourself occasionally needing to ream out a hole, then I recommend you pick these up. This is a set that, like I said, I got at Harbor Freight. I will leave a link down to one that I also found on Amazon. It is $8.99 and it is definitely worth it if you need it. The final tool that I'm recommending here is something that might be blaringly obvious to anyone who's doing woodworking in the garage or anywhere else, but that is get yourself a good tape measure. They do not have to be expensive, but more importantly, get yourself a couple of them. Now this one I got at the big box store. You can get it on Amazon for about $9.98. It is uh, really useful, but more importantly, have yourself more than one of them. I find myself constantly looking around for a tape measure here in the garage. And so I actually have three of them strewn throughout the garage here. I have one that I like to keep here on the workbench in a drawer so I know where it is all the time. I have another one over by the table saw. And then I have another one that I store over on the chop saw. Those are the three predominant locations where I'm doing measurements that I need to either cut something or mark something. And so for only a few dollars, you can invest in yourself in a relatively small one. Now this one happens to be a 30 footer. We bought this one because the, uh, the 25 and the 12 that I have, I needed something a little bit larger. But here in the workbench, I keep the 12 footer around. It is very small. Again, it is very inexpensive. And the reason I keep the 12 footer around is the workbench is only eight feet long. I am not measuring anything more than 12 feet with that tape measure. The same with the table saw and the same with the chop saw. And so keep yourself just a smaller set of these around. You can pick them up in three packs as well that are slightly more expensive, obviously, because there's three of them, but you do get a little bit of savings by having the multi-pack. So highly recommend go yourself out, get yourself a couple tape measures and leave them in your most frequently used locations in the garage. All right, well, that was a quick run through for my five favorite tools, part two. And so if you're interested in the tools from part one, I recommend you click this video right here and go out and check it out.